And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer to the temple, coming to a... a... a, a man passionate about Celtic and Norse myth, the creator of the upcoming Stormwe Stormweaver's solo, R solo RPG, which is now getting translated into, in into English. The one and only Pavel Deminsky, and I apologize for pronouncing things wrong again. It's okay. Hello, Mildra. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Um, so, it's a bit of a tradition around here to open with the humble beginnings. With that in mind, I'd like you to walk me through your um, first introduction to role-playing games, and what was it that made it stick for you? So, uh, for me, the first meeting with uh, role-playing games, it was uh, a meeting with, um, in fact, uh, 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 fighting fantasy books, mm -hmm. um, and and it was a strange times because it was eighties when I was a kid, mm -hmm. and I, I live in Poland and I grew up in Poland, and you may know that uh, you know in eighties in Poland there was time of the communism, mm -hmm. so we didn't have much um, Western books here. There was a very good developed uh, local fantasy, but not much um, fantasy games or or fantasy books. Obviously, there were Tolkien, Ursula Le Guin, but, you know, except of them, there was not much. And um, one Polish author got uh, one fant fighting fantasy book, and he decided to, based on that, to write his own book in Polish based on the fighting fantasy uh, uh, mechanics, but in his own fantasy world. Mm -hmm. And it became very popular in Poland in '87. Uh, we, we didn't have a direct access to all this fighting fantasy world, but but we, at least we had the mechanic and the authoring authoring uh, uh, authoring world, mm -hmm. and I, I felt love with uh, uh, with this kind of uh, with with this kind of solo books. So uh, then I was trying to find more and more, and of course in the 90s the system changed, the world opened for us. We had access for uh, many different uh, books from 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 uh, Western world, and um, uh, yeah, and I was I was looking for uh, these game books, and I was playing a lot, uh, starting from Fighting Fantasy, then through Blood Sword mm -hmm. of Dave Morris, then Fabled Lands. Uh, uh, and I also started to write my my own uh, my own uh, game books, and on Stormweavers, I was I was working I was working on this on this game for the last twenty years, mm -hmm. and right now it came true, <laughs> and it has been financed first in Poland, right now on Kickstarter. So I'm I'm really very happy that you know I could I could make uh, my dream come true. Yeah. Now. When it come when it came to the when it came to the creation of Stormweavers, you mentioned um, you mentioned you mentioned fighting fantasy, but some but what I'm what I'm but the other aspect that I'm curious about is there obviously there's a lot of um, Celtic and Norse um, influences within yeah. what you've presented with Stormweavers. Um, yeah. What turn what um, what turned what turned you on to the, to those particular mythos? Um, regional myth, regional mythos, mythos I, mythos Z. Uh, I'll figure, I'll figure out how to say, I'll figure out what the word is later. But <laughs> those, gen, those general um, regions. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I always loved uh, this uh, climb on northern Europe because uh, you know. Also, I was, I was very fond on Slavic methodology. Mm -hmm. I'm obviously I'm Polish, but uh, uh, you know we had a, we have we had a common history with uh, these Norse countries, and also with Germanic countries. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I really uh, enjoy reading about the history and and going back go, go, going there. I would like to learn more about those people, about those. Uh, 
uh, way of living, about this way of thinking, and I started to read about the the the, the, the mythologies. Mm -hmm. I started uh, to dip uh, into the Norse mythologies, all these uh, stories about Ezir and all these all these myths about. Uh, uh, Vikings uh, old tales. Mm -hmm. I was also reading a lot of on Slavic methodology about German and it also uh, Germanic methodology, and it also uh, brought me to 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 Celtic myths, to myths from Ireland and uh, ancient England. So, you know, I was always uh, like a citizen of the North, <laughs> and I feel like a part of the history. So it was great to me to build my own world. Um, in this in these realms mm -hmm. now when it now um, you mentioned that you mentioned that storm weavers is some is something that you've that you've been de that you've been developing for 20 for um 20 years i believe you said um yes would it be fair to would it be fair to say that it's been that um it's been something that you that you've just that you've just iterated upon from its um, from its original vision and what and if so what were what were some of the things that you had um, conceived of early on that did that didn't that ended up getting um, lost in the shuffle as you refined the project? Uh, yeah, the, the 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 game had uh, many many phases. Um, I started first to to build this world. Then, in this world, I wanted to to have a story. And from the let's say technical point of view, I started to work on this game um, first, writing it in the just in the regular book. Then I started to uh, work on this and 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 have this project as a as a kind of website. Then I also created the uh, the uh, the mobile app mm -hmm. uh, and and when I, I a couple of years when when the project was i mean the, the story and the, uh, the 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 book was in fact was was completed i i got to the uh, uh, game book uh, polish game book uh, um, uh, facebook group and i i showed the screenshots to the people and i asked them if they what do they think about it and i was very surprised because they said we would like to have a regular book. We don't have. We don't want to like to. We don't want. We don't like to have an app. So it was another phase for me to rework everything to to the book again. And then I also, I because I always was like the battle maps. I always liked the combat maps uh, and uh, and minis. Uh, uh, and, and and so I introduced to it the. Uh, the, the 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 combat maps and I I reworked the all the battles in the in the book so you can you can just use the map and and fight with your opponents there mm -hmm. and I I think this is a, uh, something special uh, in this project because uh, there is a, a lot of of, of of the game books mm -hmm. but right now on this stage where we are right now in, with the final product you have the storybook that leads you through the story but then when the battle begins you just uh, uh in, in the book you have information what uh, which one of nine battle maps you need to take which one of the opponents you need to take and there are also special conditions on the for each map and the special battle conditions uh and then you you do your fight uh, on the map, and I think it, it brings a really new experience and, and good experience because uh, you, you, it's ju not just the dice dice rolling, but but you know something happened. You can you can move around, uh, you can do some kind of special attacks. You can run away. You can get back uh, to the fight. You can select the, the the opponents. You can decide if you would like to start from the. Uh, weakest or from the strongest, you need to avoid the fireballs from the from the wizards or wilds, and I think it it, it, it gives another additional action to to, uh, to to the book, and it makes it a little bit more role playing uh, than in the regular uh, game book. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of, speaking of that, I do I do want to 
um, del delve into into some of the mechanics that you have now. Obvi obviously, un unlike the un unlike the uh, now, first off, in a fair amount of in a fair amount of game books, while it's while it isn't full while it isn't full customizable like a like a part like a party based RPG, there's there in some cases there's room for um wig for wiggling uh, wiggling about when it comes to what the protagonist brings to bear um a a um, major example I, c I always call back to when it comes to this kind of thing is the lone wolf game books mm -hmm. um it, now with storm weavers it's ta it's taking the perspective of thi of thymine and what i'm curious about is it is his opening loadout is there is there some degree of um, flexibility with that, or is it always the same starting point? Uh, um, yes, it is the same starting point, and um, and because there is a, some special concept um, around building uh, this uh, the, 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 this way of playing, mm -hmm. because usually you have two types of game book. One is the game book that you that is. Uh, um, uh, that they have uh, many places and you just move from one place to another. Mm -hmm. And the second one type is select uh, your choices and you, you just, you have a, like a kind of so I, I, I was trying to combine them both. Mm -hmm. So it is a story but the particular parts of the story are depending on what you do in some places. So you can move between locations. There are like more than 20 locations. And in there, you can uh, execute different activities, collect different uh, items or, or possessing different spells. But some actions can push your story farther. So for example, if you if you execute some action in, in the mines, right? And then you uh, go out and you come to the city, you may, you may for example, meet the new person and it will push the story farther. So you have two aspects here, right? This is open world. You can walk to the different, you can go to the different locations, you can do different activities, but still in the background, the the the, the main story is going. So um, I try to combine them both. Uh, so first, because I had some, some idea for the story, but also I wanted to give people freedom to get there. So there's a couple of endings mm -hmm. in the game. Some are better, some are worse. It's you to decide which, is, which suits you the best, right? And mm -hmm. there is a different ways of getting there. And also, it's like because you have two uh, main characteristics, which is dexterity and wisdom. So you can win the game in, in two ways, right? You can yeah. invest in your dexterity, and then you know there will be different kind of game. But also you can invest in your wisdom and it will be very different kind of game and very different path that you will and you will discover the very different things. Mm -hmm. Now when it now when it comes to um when it comes to testing wisdom and dexterity, since those are those are gonna be the primary fallbacks, um, combat notwithstanding, um how does the die roll work for it? Because I'm assuming that this is mainly going to be using six-sided dice, but are we doing aim high? Are we doing aim low, or is it or is it set based or something in or something in the middle? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, this is correct. This is uh, two six-sided dice, uh, and for example, if you have dexterity eight, if you roll eight or less, you win. You pass the test. Mm -hmm. If you roll nine or more, then uh, you. Um, you lose the test, uh, so it means that you need to roll uh, roll low, and you need to high the high uh, dexterity or wisdom. But there is also the the, the catch in this, because it also uh, depends on your on your health. Like if you have uh, fifteen percent of health mm -hmm. or or less, then you need to deduct uh, minus. Uh, one uh, and it, it's it is uh, uh, more difficult and if you have 
uh, like, I don't know, 15% of your health, you need to even deduct minus four. So if you are in the good health condition, then it's easier to you to pass the test. But if you if you are hurt or if you are tired, then it's it's much more difficult on the dexterity and likewise on wisdom, mm -hmm. right? Because it's also difficult to concentrate on something when something is, is, is hurting you, right? Mm -hmm. And not and obvi obviously much much like a lot of game books, it's go I'm assuming that it's going to be um, ba based on a lot of the elements are going to be based on the num the numbers of each section. You know, go go to go to number a for this section, go to number X for this decision, go to number Y that that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. It works like this. Um, that that brings me to combat because this particular approach to combat that you're doing is is one that I'd say is I'd say is fairly unique to to um to co to combat within um within game books since a lot of times even with even with game books that I that I've enjoyed the combat system is ve is very straightforward it's usually it's usually one on one and it's usually resolved in a few um a few dice rolls whereas in this case you're trying to go for full on grid combat and the big question that I have on on this is in regards to how the um, monsters will operate in these encounters. Is there some sort of if else kind of AI that they that they have set up? Mm -hmm. Okay, so each uh, of the movements of the monsters uh, depend on the conditions and on the battle map. So, mm -hmm. for example, in some locations, the monsters are and they are just coming to, and they are trying to find the shortest shortest way to you, right? Mm -hmm. Some kind of monsters, they are, uh, uh, they may, for example, you can have a situation that you have three type of monsters on the on the battle map, and one of them is keeping uh, away, and he is trying to reach you with magic. Uh, second one is trying to get you as soon as possible, and the third one is cautious. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the first one is defeated, then you may roll for his morale, and and the second one may start to flee. So there is a, a um, I mean, each each of these battle maps, and because as I said, there is a nine battle maps, but I'm using these battle maps a couple of times. So there is a lot of fight that you can be engaged in. Yeah. And in every kind of fight, uh, in in every in every 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 combat, uh, the situation is different, uh, and there are different types of opponents, and they are um, they are behaving differently. All all right. Now, when now when it come when it comes to when it comes to the se the other thing when it comes to the setup is i've i've seen my fair share of instances where the uh, where the um where the combat system it, the dynamic mechanic system is roll low for um non combat encounters and roll high for combat encounters is something like that going to be at play here or is it universally a roll low system Mm -hmm. uh, yes, you are right. It's a little bit different. The fight has a different, uh, uh, that, uh, different mechanics. So it, it works like this, that first our protagonist is moving mm -hmm. and he's attacking. And then the first opponent is moving and he attacks. And then second one is moving and he attacks. And third one and so on, right? Mm -hmm. Until the round uh, finishes. Uh, so right now the attack. If, if you attack the opponent, you roll your dice and you add to your dexterity and you do the same to your opponent. And then who has the higher score that wins and to calculate the number of the uh, of the wounds, uh, of the injuries, mm -hmm. you need to take the difference. So for example, and it, it, this concept is saying that 
uh, if I have a low dexterity and my opponent has high dexterity and he won and he roll a high number on the die, then he will he will get me a, he he will he will hit me with a, a, a huge number of the injuries, mm -hmm. right? So, for example, when you engage into the fight too early with some and you are not really good prepared for some fight, then very big opponent can just crush you with one blow, right? And it works also in the the other way. If you are well prepared, right, and you have a, uh, you, uh, uh, and you have uh, good uh, armor and you have a uh, good weapon mm -hmm. then you you will you will be much more dangerous to them so what, what i just uh, described is a is a general rule but also when you calculate the injuries injuries mm -hmm. you have additional bonus uh, from your weapon uh, and you have additional bonus from your armor mm -hmm. and likewise the same the opponents they have so, for example, in our example, right? Let's say the uh, the difference is four, but, but I have uh, an axe uh, that is really very big and sharp, and I have plus three. Uh, but my opponent has a uh, uh, armor that is minus one, right? So in this case, usually I would the, my difference was four, right? But I need to add three, mm -hmm. and I need to deduct uh, a minus one so in fact i will give him six injuries and that the other thing that the other thing that comes to mind when i come with this sort of thing is the lethality um some ga some games are highly lethal where a, where a couple where a couple good hits in will will put you in the dirt and some have um characters that are that have a little bit more tankiness to them um where does Stormweavers fall into that dichotomy? Mm -hmm. So some fights may be really lethal if you just engage the, them too early. And um, it's also up to you because you build your character. You you build your... Uh, uh, you increase your skills. You, you increase your dexterity into them and so on. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you need to judge. I mean, the, the game is not designed that you just you know go and engage in every battle and then you need to win right mm -hmm. it's, it's not like that probably first time you will lose right maybe second time you will also lose then in the first time third time you will know in which battles and in which situation you should engage and in, in, in which you shouldn't do it yet yeah but it's not like a, i mean the combat is a part of it and it's a very important uh part of the game but it's, it's something bigger, right? You need to think if you are ready to engage in this combat or not yet, and you should you should let it go, right? And, and you should you should concentrate on other things uh, in the story. Yeah. Now, one of the things that was hinted at in the in the um, description of combat maps within within the uh, Kickstarter page was to, was reference to uh, maneuvers. Um, now a phrase a phrase like maneuvers come come in a um, RPG sense has its own has its own as its own assumptions but would it be f would it be fair to say would it be fair to say that encounters are not are are not always going to be a, se a series of trait of trading basic attacks I'm not sure if I got the the question. If you can be a little bit um, more precise, I'm more I'm more referring to what what was what was implied by um by maneuvers when des when describing um combat. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, you have uh, different options here. Uh, if you just if you are at the neighboring field, mm -hmm. it's just a regular combat. But what you can do. You can have additional bonus when you attacked in charge after moving through two fields, mm -hmm. right? So you, have, uh, you, you can attack from charge. Also, what you can do, you have something that is called cunning strike. And if you use cunning strike, so you can do it uh, instead of the regular uh, combat. So in this case, you just test your wisdom. And if you win, 
then uh, you you give uh, uh, free injuries to the opponent. If you lose, you take free injuries. So it's like you you can also use your your wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. And also if if you if you win with a, a, a number of free or more, if you just uh, give free or more uh, um, injuries uh, to the opponent, you you push him out. So he needs to step out two two fields back, mm -hmm. and then if he if he hit someone or he is hit something, right? Then then he, he loses additional um, uh, additional uh, points of uh, HP. Um, so there are uh, uh, you can you can take different strategies, right? So for example, you can you can try to uh, uh, you can you can try to attack uh, in charge, or you can try to uh, uh, find the right position. So uh, a couple of the opponents cannot attack you at the same time. Um, also, the speed is important, um, and I, I just don't want to spoil <laughs> things. But there, there will be some possibilities that uh, you know you, you can be you can you can have high, higher speed than uh, your opponents, or uh, that there will be situations that the opponents are very very uh, they they have very high speed, like they are flying or or. Um, they are moving very fast, so you, you need to choose your strategy. And you know, I was I was spending a lot of time on testing it, and um, and also I, I spent a lot of time on balancing. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think there is a lot of option when you understand how does it work. You can have a lot of fun with uh, just using the, uh, the your own tactics, not just you know hack and slash everyone. Mm -hmm. Now. Given the fact that it it's very cl it's very clear that the t the uh, two primary stats that a character is going to live and die by are wisdom and dexterity, um, if some if someone ha if someone has if someone's build in the in their particular um, run leans more towards wisdom and or more towards dexterity, what w what would be some of the um, things that would that They'd be better at or str or struggle with which with um with fo by focusing on either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but except of the of the fight, there are a, a lot of tests, a lot of wisdom tests, mm -hmm. um, and you know when you win the wisdom test, you can also increase your dexterity. You can find a, a special uh, magic items, or you can you can find the weapons. So, or you can, for example, win the money. Uh, and uh, there, there is at least one path that you can uh, just starting with the very low dexterity and high wisdom you can get a lot of money at the very beginning and then you can buy a lot of stuff that makes you stronger and it, it, it prevents you from dying right and it works also in the other way right so maybe you you would like to invest your in, the, in your dexterity which means that you will you will at the beginning you will uh, um, uh, you will win all the all the all the battles on the battle maps, but then there are also imp important uh, aspects of the story, and you can you can just miss it, or you can uh, the, 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 the 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 NPCs can just don't like you, <laughs> or or you can you can you can fail in in some aspects that that needs uh, uh, you to be smart, right? So, but but you can win in both ways, and mm -hmm. this is this is. I, I really tried to to keep this balance, and I I really spend a lot of time to make sure that you can win like that, you can win like that, because in this case, you create a very different story, you create very different character, and um, this is a very different kind of gameplay, and this is a part of fun of uh, spending time with this game. Oh. Uh all right, I can I can certainly get I can certainly get behind that. Um, so it de it definitely it definitely sounds like it would be it would be um very it it would be very it would be on the trickier end of things to focus solely on one or the on one or the other. There's going to be um at at most a sixty forty distribution one way or the other instead of a a vast gap between the two. Um, 
it's hard to tell, frankly speaking. I've never measured it like that. Um, but uh, I, I, I think this is the game that you should that you should play a couple of times on the very different way, mm -hmm. just to see how does it work for you. And speaking of that, since uh, since a lot of a lot of um, a lot of game a lot of game books and a lot of design when it comes to when it comes to this sort of setup involves involves a lot of replay, replayability and has has that been t has that been taken into account so that there's a lot of um pa a lot of paths to the proverbial roam um you know um i think that the 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 way how this game was con constructed Acted. It, it provides you the high uh, replayability. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, of course, it's uh, this is the nature. Okay, that also it has its limitations, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, it's 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 like because then there is a trade-off always, right? Mm -hmm. First, you can try to propose some story, uh, right, and and walk the first person through the story, and then the story stays for a long time with the person mm -hmm. or you can you can you can propose something completely random but in this case you don't have influence on the story right mm -hmm. you just uh, you, you just you just lay, let let the people play and there are a lot of, of books that are or sorry not really books but there are a lot of uh, of of uh, of rpg games or there are a lot of the tabletop uh, board games that are doing better job right mm -hmm. so yeah I, 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 I just needed to take into the consideration the limitation of the gender. Uh, but I think it's very safe to you to say to, to, to that you can play like three or four times and you will, you will not be bored. Yeah. Now, one of the, one of the, one of the things that I, that um, caught my, that caught my attention was, was the, um, was the map sheet, whether it be whether it be the st whether it be the um, standard base, um, basic sheet to draw a map or the or the scratch off map on cer on certain pledge tiers, um, what was what was the inspiration for doing that particular approach, especially since, as I hint, as I hinted in the past, a lot of um, game books are have a very self contained approach where everything has to be within the pages of the book. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, designing this game, we wanted to go, uh, I mean, beyond to this, uh, let's say, game book genre, right? Mm -hmm. So we were looking for different different possibilities. And this, as, as, as I said, this game had different um, incarnations, let's say. So even two years ago, this, even I, I, I had this game as a really solid big tabletop game, right? Uh, uh, with the very big board and uh, quite uh, uh, a big uh, world map then you are moving on with the, with the with the mini so there was very different ideas in the game but finally we decided to do something affordable because we didn't want to create the very big uh, game that you know will cost like 400 bucks or something like this we wanted to, to this game to be affordable but we wanted to add as many fancy things as as we can do so that's why uh you know we, we added the, the, the of course the the, the battle maps and the uh, and the cardboard minis it was uh it, it, it it's in the standard without it that it it It, it would not work. Mm -hmm. We are trying to find a replacement for big map on which you, you move to your counter. And and this was actually um, the idea of our um, uh, art director, Tommy Barr, uh, when we had our first, uh, when we had our first uh, campaign in Poland. Uh, so he came up with this idea and I, I really liked it because uh, when as it's like that when you when you go when you come when you when you get to the uh, uh, to the location in the book, um, there is a sign. Uh, so you need to find this sign on the map on the scratch map, and then you need to scratch this field, and then and underneath you see the the, the drawing of the place. And I, I like this idea very much because 
it, it, it is not a very big investment, right? But mm -hmm. it, it brings something new to the, to the gameplay and it's, 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 it's quite fresh. And I'm, I'm really glad that we added it. All right, I, I can I can certainly um, I can certainly see see that now. Um, during when it came to when it came when you when you had first exposed when you had first exposed Storm Weavers to um, play testing in it in its most recent iteration, um, what were what would you say were some of the big takeaways that you had from the experience and get and getting that and getting those waves of feedback? Mm -hmm. um, uh, I had a. Uh, I think that the most takeaways were about the balance of the uh, of the different battles mm -hmm. on the battle maps. Uh, uh, we found out that in some cases it's um, quite difficult to get uh, the opponent because he was too heavy armored and you were just you know but but also on this on this stage of the of the game you also were heavy heavy armor so it was really difficult to to do anything because you were just you know pushing out and put, yeah, you've been pushed out but you know you, you didn't get injuries or opponent did get not injuries mm -hmm. so we spent a lot of time on on on, on balancing and uh, i think we introduced like uh, almost uh, 90 or 80 if i remember uh, correctly corrections uh, to, to this aspect of the game uh, and except of this uh, also um, there are some changes in the gameplay uh, that we introduced uh, based on the uh, on the um, uh, on the feedback from the testers but I don't want to get into it very much because I don't want to spoil the story. Yeah, ob uh, obviously, I don't, obviously, I don't want to have you um, don't yeah. want to have you spo don't have you spoil the st the um, story. Yeah, exactly. But you know, it was always a very good feedback, mm -hmm. and you know, as I was really uh, into the old games, so mm -hmm. I was very curious to learn the new solutions from the new games yeah. that I was not aware of. So mm -hmm. I introduced them as well, and so I think it, right now it, it's a very nice mix of the of the like classic and something new, something modern that is being used in the modern games. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the one of the options for for backers is the is um, the digital version, and in recent years there's been a bit of a push. Towards towards introducing more more hyperlinking and more navigational tools within PDF releases for ver for various um for various games, is that something that's been taken into consideration for the PDF version of Stormweavers? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, we would like to have a, a hyperlinked um, PDF, uh, but you know the main idea it was. Uh, to prepare the version for print mm -hmm. so there will be everything you need to play your game so you can print it on your printer and this was especially created uh, for the uh, for the bakers from the remote countries mm -hmm. because we came to conclusion that sometimes for someone the shipping cost may be a barrier or for someone would like to have a game faster uh, for example Two months faster, right? Because one, first one, we once we finish all the uh, all the graphical design, right? We can share it already. So we decided to to propose this this PDF. But the, the main idea was that you can print it, uh, you can cut out um, the minis, mm -hmm. uh, you can prepare uh, your battle maps as you want, and and and, and you can play. And this was the the idea. But there is also the possibility that you can just have the PDF with linked um, uh, paragraphs, uh, and there is also an app that uh, has been already founded. And th this app, these are the um, these are the digital battle maps. Mm -hmm. So you can have it on your phone, you can have it on your iPad, or you can have it on on your browser, on your desktop, and 
it, it will not do anything for you. I mean, uh, there are the digital dice you can you can you can shoot, but still you need to move all these uh, characters. You need to do the calculations by your own mm -hmm. because I I had also version because I, I come from IT right so. Mm -hmm. I developed once a version that did everything for you. It calculated all the logics, but I just realized that it, 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 you are just not a part of the game, right? Mm -hmm. Because if the computer is doing everything for you, it's not a, uh, it's it's not a analog game anymore. It, it starts to be a computer game, and it's even worse from the computer games because the computer games are doing it better. So. <laughs> You know, and, and you just don't. If you don't understand how the mechanics works, and you just press, uh, like uh, attack, 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 right? Mm -hmm. You are not a part of the game. So finally, the the the, the app is just it it, it it just works like a uh, like analog uh, uh, battle map. So you can move uh, uh, the the tokens around. You can also shoot your dice, but all the calculations, everything you need to do by your own. All right, I I gotcha. And when it come now, when it came to when it came to the when it came to the app when it came to the app, um, how was the, was it relatively easy to tr to transfer a lot of the a lot of the material over, especially since you're not dealing with having to put in some sort of RNG thing. Uh, no, it was not uh, particularly uh, uh, particular difficult. Uh, as you know, this is my job, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I'm working with the, with technology. Uh, in fact, my my job is uh, development of 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 mobile apps. Mm -hmm. So um, it was not particularly um, difficult. Um, within that within that app, some something that something that i'm curious about if if this if this is going to be done in it and it's it probably it probably is but i'd be i'd be remiss if i didn't ask and that is some method of bookmarking um it's not, not really because you know in in the app you don't have a story right mm -hmm. in app you have only the uh, the the uh, the battle maps mm -hmm. to, to you can the story you have in pdf or you can in the book right mm -hmm. but not in the app but uh, what i would like to do also and i think there is a uh, one goal uh, for it uh, this is a digital uh, character sheet mm -hmm. and there uh, you can uh, you can uh, you can use it as a uh, instead of the regular character sheet, and I want to, to make it like it, it will remember uh, your uh, last statistics. It will have uh, some kind of uh, database uh, stored in the browser. So if you open it again in a couple of days, it should remember uh, all your statistics from you know from from your last play. Yep. Now. When within some, within some of the stretch goals, um, there's a there's a few there's a few things I'm curious about. Um, one is the is the um, I'll start with the easy one. That being the prequel and epilogue that's um planned. Um, what ex what exactly would those would those particular things entail? Would it just be ver would it be very similar to the ma to the main book to the main book, just adding a additional, for lack of a better term, episode. Or is it something else? Yeah, the the, the, the the prequel and the epilogue. So, in the in the main story, uh, in the main story, uh, our protagonist is a dwarf mercenary warrior, mm -hmm. and he is experienced guy. But in the prequel, uh, the, the prequel happens during his first first campaign. So he is young dude. His first time in the battle. And he needs to learn from the elders, mm -hmm. and also he gets uh, some special mission uh, to take. Um, and also the, um, uh, the 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 prequel the prequel uh, takes place uh, in another part of the Stormweaver world, because the main story uh, is located in Midgard, and the um, uh, the prequel is is taking place in Ireland. And uh, so he meets a diff 
different kind of creatures there and different kind of situations and also people have and and, and people and monsters and, and other uh, uh, NPCs they have a different character uh, so this is this is this is also uh, uh, the, the construction of the game is, is, is similar, right? You also have a battle maps, you also have a story, uh, but you know, I think that the climate is different. Uh, and in the epilogue, and in the, in the epilogue, uh, Timin, uh, our protagonist, is old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when he's old, he also has a, a very different uh, approach. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, he has some mission to do. Uh, and it also is happening in the different setup. Uh, so I think it's nice that you know you can use the same assets uh, of the game, but you can you can tell a different story in the different place with the different different characters showing different part of the world. Mm -hmm. And this is only like game book is giving you this freedom, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you have a let's say regular. Um, regular board game it's not so easy to do it yeah. but with the, with the book you can you can tell a much better story and you can give also interesting choices while you can still use uh, the same assets to play mm -hmm. now one of the other things i'm curious about is the world guide um and I'm, guess, I'm guessing I'm guessing a lot of that is just going into the setting of the, of Stormweaver's interpretation of Midgard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Um, it has a couple of chapters. Um, it's a, uh, the first chapter is a general description of the world. Mm -hmm. The second one is the history. Uh, the third one is geography. Um, the fourth is the description of the different different races mm -hmm. um, and fifth is about the magic and so it uh, and the sixth one is about the gods and about the beliefs and i just i don't want to reveal too much but i will just say that this is a uh, the world of the of the of the of the storm weavers mm -hmm. it's uh it's it's a little it's, it's diff different from us from our world because sometime around 400 or 600 uh, year um, uh, something something happened some disaster happened and the Europe was split into two parts mm -hmm. uh, southern and northern and uh, uh, down to the uh, to the big mountains like Alps, Apennines, or Carpathians, mm -hmm. they, they appeared a, a huge storms. They are constantly. Uh, they are. They are. They are there. So nobody can can move from from northern Europe to the to the southern Europe that was completely cut out. And also. Um, it's, it's, it's not being said in this story why this this catastrophe happens and I, I think that uh, uh, I will create the the next books that will um, dig into it more mm -hmm. into this thread but uh, in generally the northern Europe on the early Middle Ages uh, it was very difficult uh, to the people uh, to to recover from this catastrophe um, so all this all the, the world development is slower. And there is a lot of monsters, and it's difficult to, to also to fight the monsters. And there is a different, difficult uh, uh, creatures that right now we know only from legend, legends, but but they are real uh, in the Stormweaver's world. Mm -hmm. And because uh, the development is slower, and the cities are rare, uh, then the world is much more. Um, it's, it's like the people feel that it's much bigger. Mm -hmm. than, than than we know and it's much more dangerous and and much more divided and and i think this is an interesting thing about this world that, that you can move around it you can for example in the i think in the future stories you will be able to also um wander to to slavic countries uh like uh, there is a land of of poland and russia together mm -hmm. uh or there are Germanic countries, there are Gallic countries, uh, there are uh, Celtic countries, and in every play, 
is the world is very different because I what I observed in different fantasy world is that you know everything is mixed up. So wherever you go, you have the same setup, like elf, dwarves, and so on, right? Yeah. But not in the storm weavers, right? When you, for example, when you roam into the into Midgard, you will meet more creatures like connected with the Norse mythology. If you move to to, to Ireland, then you will meet the 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 the, the, the personification of Irish myths. And when you when you move to Poland, for example, then it's, it's completely different because, for example, we didn't have in our methodology, we didn't have dwarves, right? We had different creatures that you maybe know from Sapkowski's novel, from, from The Witcher. Mm -hmm. So I think it gives, gives me as an author a very good flexibility and freedom. Uh, and also it, it will give a lot of diversity mm -hmm. uh, for the future stories. And I and I'll cer I'll certainly be looking forward to how to how that um, develops. Now, at the at the time of this recording, you are you get you are at fifty two point one thousand euro, um, which it which it which I do want to give my congratulations for for completely smashing your initial goals. Um, what would you be shooting for as far as a release window for the digital? version since i know the physical version is going to take significantly longer um and i don't i don't mean a, i don't mean a specific date but just a general um just a general estimate in turn yeah. i would target august uh, for english version mm -hmm. and september for french version um because it's still um okay so what we have right now ready uh, we already have translated the uh, main uh, game because I wrote everything in Polish. The edition was in Polish, mm -hmm. uh, so you know I don't feel my, uh, my my English is so good mm -hmm. to to write it also in English. So I hired the, the professional translator and professional editor, and they did a really really good job. I mean, tra translating also the idioms and and different languages things that you know I was reading and I was I was really amazed <laughs> of it in English. Yeah. Uh, so, but we still need to translate the prequel and the epilogue, and then we need to edit it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it takes some time, but I think we should be ready with the digital version to August English version, and for October uh, with uh, the uh, physical version that we will be able to ship to the backers. All right. And uh, like I said, I'll, cer I'll certainly be looking for forward to it, and I'm and I'm hope I'm hoping that it's able to get a get a couple more stretch goals um, unlocked before the before the um, t before the 18 days is, at the time of this recording um, runs out. Oh, we would love to. We would love to really add. Uh, I mean, we we would love to reveal all the stretch goals. Mm -hmm. Because we we see uh, a strong push from the backers that they would like to have them, especially things like a box, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and uh, yeah, we, we really would like to, to, to give it uh, to, to 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 the bakers. Yeah. So yeah, we, and, and and we are also thinking about some surprises. So maybe next day we'll see something <laughs> a little bit in in, in addition. All all right, and I'll I'll certainly be keeping an eye out for whatever for whatever surprise that is in store on that front. Yeah. And with all that said, I do want to sincerely thank you once again for taking the time out of your schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness at play here. And anytime you see fit to return to my temple, uh, the door is always open. As I often say around yeah. here. Drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mildura. Thank you very much for having me. It was great pleasure to talk to you. And thank you very much for giving me opportunity to to, to, to speak to the audience and to, to reveal a little bit about Stormweavers. Mm -hmm. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>